Jackson Young. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. My question is to the Minister representing the Trade Minister, Senator Payne. The TPP 11 allows global corporations to sue governments who make laws in the interests of their citizens the envi and the environment under insidious ISDS clauses. It weakens protection of labour rights, it removes labour market testing, and does not even mention climate change. This is a dud deal. Uh, for Australia. It's a deal for corporations, not Australian workers or consumers. When will the gov government stop spinning and tell the Australian people the truth? This is a deal Order. for their mates Senator, in big business, Senator not a Young. deal Senator for the people. Senator Hanson Young, please. I have someone on their feet for a point of order. Senator Macdonald. Mr President, my point of order relates to uh, questions, and the standing orders clearly say that uh, facts can be used if they're relevant to the question. But it does not allow arguments. And this uh, comment in the question that this is a dub deal is purely commentary. It's an argument. It's this senator's opinion. And it should not be allowed as a question. It, if she wants to debate it, that's, there's time for that later. But these are not questions and shouldn't be allowed, I Thank suggest, you. with respect. Thank you, Senator Macdonald. On this issue, I said I would come back to the chamber after I gave senators a chance to make submissions to me yesterday. I have received at least one, and I will be coming back to the chamber tomorrow. I urge all senators to read Standing Order 73, uh, which there has been substantial slippage in its application of, which says that questions shall not contain arguments, inferences, imputations, or epithets. Um, facts, uh, statement of facts can be used where they are strictly necessary to render the question intelligible. There is a habit of questions including more than is strictly necessary, and I will, in our next sitting session after I come back to the chamber, start to more strictly apply this provision. Senator Hanson Young. I finished my question. Okay. I'll call Senator Payne, representing the Minister for Trade. Oh, um, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr President. I was actually waiting for Senator Hanson Young's question as opposed to her uh, narrative. But, uh, nevertheless, it gives me a valuable opportunity, Mr. President, to uh, speak to the Chamber in relation to the TPP 11, which is one of the most comprehensive trade deals ever concluded. In fact, it will eliminate 98 per cent of tariffs for 11 countries, with a combined GDP of more than $13.8 trillion Australian and close to 500 million consumers. The big winners from this FTA Mr. President, are Australian farmers manufacturers, service providers, small businesses and all exporters because it's going to be easier for them to sell their goods and supply services in free trade area that spans half the globe. In 2017, almost a quarter of Australia's total exports, which were worth $92 billion, went to the countries that are part of the TPP-11, and that is going to continue to grow as tariffs fall under the TPP-11. There has been, as Senator Birmingham referred to yesterday, modelling undertaken internationally from Brandeis International Business School from John Hopkins University, which shows that Australia is forecast to see $15.6 billion in net annual benefits to national income by 2030. So what the TPP-11 provides, Mr. President, is improved access to markets where Australia already has FTA, FTAs, such as Japan. So, for example, building on our existing bilateral FTA, including accelerated reductions in Japan's tariffs on beef and elimination of a range of Japan's cheese tariffs. It's also going to create Australia's first FTA with Canada and Mexico, giving Australian exporters preferential access to two of the world's top 20 economies for the first time. I would have thought, Mr. President, that uh, those in this chamber who support business, support small business, support manufacturers, support jobs, support farmers, support service providers, support export, uh, exporters would recognise the value Payne. of this initiative, Time for the Mr. Answer President. Has expired. And Senator Hanson Young, a supplementary question. Uh, th thank you, Mr. President. A supplementary question on the topic of uh, caring and for and supporting Australian workers. The TPP 11 commits Australia to accepting unlimited numbers of temporary workers from Canada, Mexico, Chile, Japan, Malaysia, and Vietnam by exempting these nations from labour market testing. Why is the government not backing Australian workers? Tell us and tell us truthfully. Order. Senator Payne. Uh, 
Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. I think it is important to note that the TPP 11 doesn't change the skills and experience requirements right. that need to be met by foreign workers who are applying for a temporary skilled visa to work in Australia. So that means that workers from the TPP 11 signatory countries remain subject to and must satisfy any skills assessment required for the visa process. Workers from the signatory countries also remain subject to and must satisfy licensing and registration processes which are required by state and territory governments. Uh, as uh, free trade agreements have been developed over time, Mr President, uh, including uh, when those opposite were in government, since we have been in government, there have been a range of approaches to labour market testing. But one of the things that I would note is that all of Australia's trade agreements with provisions on the temporary movement of professionals also have included waivers of labour market testing, including, as I've said, uh, from both sides of the chamber. So we are concerned, Mr. Pre we are not, not concerned, Mr. President, about the sorts of issues that Senator Hanson Young Order, has raised, Senator because Payne. the evidence Time shows the, answer to the contrary. Has expired. Senator Hanson Young, a final supplementary question. Thank you, Mr. President. The Labor Party has said today that they're going to back the TPP and vote with the government on the hope of changing the arrangements in government. Can the minister clarify if the TPP can simply be renegotiated, or is this a pipe dream and an empty promise from the Labor Party? Senator Payne. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Um, I presume Senator Hanson Young is yelling at the chamber because uh, that is her favoured method of communication, but it doesn't help make the point any less false. Uh, in fact, we have welcomed the constructive approach by those opposite uh, on matters of foreign affairs, matters of international trade, uh, in engaging in a sensible discourse and a sensible discussion. In fact, uh, the minister acknowledged that in his second reading speech in the House in uh, the previous minister uh, in August uh, this year. In in terms of the, his work with the uh, Shadow Minister for Trade. Of course, any amendment to the TPP 11 would be subject to consensus by all parties. Uh, that is part of its process. Uh, that is part of its process, Mr. President. But what I do think is important is that there are people in the chamber who are interested in jobs. There are people in the chamber who are interested in the growth of Australian industry. There are people in the chamber who are interested in small business. And unfortunately, it doesn't include anyone sitting down there. Senator Martin. 